We're going to start our refrigeration cycle off with the compressor. It's the easiest component to identify with the refrigeration cycle. Now it's going to be a full cycle. You can start anywhere in the system, but it's easiest I've found for students to start with this compressor. It is essentially the heart or the engine of the refrigeration system. Here I have an example of a compressor that's been cut open. So this is the shell of the compressor. And when you take the guts out, you'll have a motor on top and you have your valves and piston at the very, very bottom. So if we take the valve body off of this compressor, we can see that there's actually pistons that go up and down. It's compression, a vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So as this piston comes up, it squeezes it, then it pulls in more vapor, and then it squeezes it and pushes it up. We're gonna go into more detail on this shortly, but here's an example of even an automotive. We could identify the compressor. Now here, we don't have a motor powering it. We simply have a belt connected to the engine. Here we have a clutch, and when we call for AC, the clutch connects to the belt, and then you actually start turning the pump action inside, sucks in low pressure vapor, pumps out high pressure vapor. Here's an example of a refrigerator system, and what we've done here is we've actually cut the top off, so you just see the guts inside, the motor and whatnot, uh, but this is a refrigerator style, and here is a commercial system. This is what you see in a lot of walk-in coolers and freezers and such like that. Now the difference is, this one if you notice, it's bolted together. We still have a motor inside, we still have the pistons, the compression system, but this is all bolted together. We call this a semi-hermetic compressor, which meaning it can be unbolted, take apart, rebuilt. This compressor and all of these are what we call hermetically sealed. They're welded together. This weld means they're put together at a factory, so they're hermetically sealed. Here I actually cut the weld off to pull the guts out. So a compressor, there's some notes that we need to take. So if you take your paper, turn it down sideways, we're gonna start making these notes. Leave a little space for the end because we're gonna add to this greatly. We need to know in HVAC, everything almost has, almost everything has two words. One, we call this a compressor. That's a very common term. Another name of this component is a vapor pump because it pumps vapor. Now we also need to know what this compressor does. So we're gonna write down two names, compressor and vapor pump. We're also going to write down what it does, and it does three things. It sucks in low pressure vapor, it pumps out high pressure vapor, and it moves the refrigerant. So in this compressor where the blue line is sucking in low pressure vapor, and then it's pumping out high pressure vapor. Very similar to an air compressor, it sucks in air vapor from around the compressor, and it pumps high pressure into a tank. It could actually be considered a compressor or a vapor pump. So it's a vapor pump. Now, if we get liquid inside of our vapor pump, it's going to, we can't compress that liquid. It's going to cause something to break and it's going to kill the compressor. That's why we must know that they are a vapor pump. They only pump vapor in this case. So we're going to go into more detail about how the system works. I like to start my refrigeration cycle with the compressor. The compressor is what's doing the work. Here we have our power wires coming into the side of the compressor. So there's going to be a motor here, and this motor is what's pumping the refrigerant. Here we have our blue line, so to speak, which is our low temperature, low pressure vapor coming into the compressor, our suction line. And here's our discharge line coming out. So refrigerant's flowing out this way in red. It's coming into the compressor this way as blue. It's just simply a vapor pump. Sucks low pressure vapor, pumps high pressure vapor, moves the refrigerant. This is the engine of the refrigeration system. Without having the engine, there's no way to move the refrigerant, there's no way to create high pressure, low pressure, and the system's gonna be a complete fail. So this is our system. Now notice this one's just came out of the field. There's spider webs in it, there's dust on it. This is what you're gonna be seeing. This is what we take care of when we do maintenance. We make sure we clean this up, we check the wire connections, we clean these coils, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. This particular type of compressor is called a scroll. It's a Copeland brand scroll compressor. And it's pretty cool because it's got these two scrolls and what they do is they actually go against each other. We're going to talk about how this works a little bit later on in another video, but this is still what we call a positive displacement compressor. To, before we get there, I'm going to introduce you to some other concepts. The compressor is one of the easiest components to identify. Here's another example of a compressor. This is what we call a shaft seal compressor. This is gonna be on usually in a car. You have a belt coming to it that controls it. There's a clutch that allows it to engage the belt to the compressor. But as we turn this, it actually turns the pump action inside the compressor. There's gonna be a plate here. We have our suction line and our discharge line is gonna be connected to this plate. But it's a automotive style compressor, same exact refrigeration system, same exact refrigeration obstacle. 
Here we have one of our most common types of compressor, and it's called a reciprocating compressor. There's going to be a motor here, and this is the rotor. And as this motor turns, there's pistons that move up and down inside of here. So you can see, let's focus on just one of these. It's up at the very top, and if we notice, it starts to go back down. When it's going down, a valve, one valve will close, another valve will open. It actually sucks in low pressure refrigerant. When we get to the bottom, this valve now stops and starts to come right back up. Now as it's coming up, the suction valve closes and the discharge valve opens and it's pushing out high pressure refrigerant through the discharge side. When it gets to the stop before it comes down, the valves switch. Now it's sucking in low pressure vapor through the suction side and then now it's coming back up so it's pumping high pressure vapor out the discharge side. So we're doing this in concession. This is a three piston uh, compressor. I'm not sure what the size was or the tonnage was on this, but this is our compressor. It's sucking in refrigerant and pumping refrigerant. It's moving the refrigerant. On the back side, you get a little bit better view of how this thing is working. Positive displacement compressor. Now let's take a look at why we want to increase the pressure and why we want to increase that temperature. So we'll look at it right here. We're going to zoom in. So I have here a demonstration. What's happening in this cylinder is a pressure change. So here we have another cylinder. This cylinder is up here at the very, very top. It's got a little tube connected to a valve. We're going to shut this valve off. It's saying there's zero PSI in here right now inside this cylinder, but really it's 14.7 atmospheric. Here this is set for Celsius, so it's 32.9 degrees Celsius. What I'm going to do is decrease the volume of the cylinder. When I decrease the volume of the cylinder, we're going to see the pressure go up. When we see the pressure go up, something else is going to happen if you focus right down here. Now if you saw, the pressure went up and the temperature went up dramatically. And here's what else is cool. When I drop the pressure, the temperature also dropped dramatically. Temperature and pressure have a direct correlation. So the idea is that this compressor needs to create that high pressure to get the higher temperature. That way my condensing coil can reject that higher temperature. So we need that compressor to increase that. Now I'm gonna put this into a vacuum and we're gonna see it drop the opposite way. So we're gonna back this up. Here we can see it dropped into a vacuum and also our temperature dropped as well. So this is where everything beautifully comes together. We can see that our compressor decreases the volume to increase the pressure and also increase the temperature. This is essential and for how our system works. This is the science behind it. So this was air. What we're going to use, what we're going to use is a refrigerant. As we decrease the volume, we're going to increase the pressure and the temperature even greater. This allows us better cooling effect. So what we're going to do is by increasing that pressure, when we get to the condensing coil, when we get over here to this condensing coil, the temperature of this coil here will be higher than the temperature of the air. So the air is going to be coming into this condensing coil and it's going to be cooler than the refrigerant. So the heat's going to leave the refrigerant and go to the cooler air. So this is how we're getting the heat out of the refrigerant. So the fan on this side is pulling air in. And on the top side, it's moving that warm air out of the top. So this fan's essential and for this system to work. 